Okay, hi there. Welcome to a new video on government intervention in markets. There is a new tax on manufacturers and importers of plastic packaging that's coming into place in the UK in the spring of 2022. First of April, in fact, of 2022. It's called the UK Plastics Packaging Tax. So let's spend a few minutes thinking about the tax, the background to it, and some of the uh, the arguments for and against such a form of intervention in the market. First of all, if we look at the scale of uh, the generation of plastic packaging waste in the UK, there was in fact a 55% increase in plastic packaging waste between 20, 2002 and 2012. Then progress made in cutting the amount of waste, in essentially breaking that long-term increase but a rise in 2018. So there's still 2.36 million metric tonnes of plastic packaging waste in 2018, which is the latest data I have. There has been progress in recycling. Uh, that big jump from 2012 to 2013 in particular, a notable increase. Uh, the figure has dipped a little bit in 2018, but it's about 40 to 45% of plastic packaging waste is recycled in the UK. <clears throat> Pardon me. Big area of improvement, though, of course, has been in the number of single-use plastic carrier bags that have been available issued by the big supermarkets. This this chart is quite quite striking. There was the the mandatory charge. I think it was is it was it five p or ten p was introduced in twenty fifteen, trying to obviously cut the environmental impact, the cost of plastic waste. Uh, Tesco in particular, the uh, number of plastic bags issued dropped from 637 million uh, to just 12 million in 2021. I think they announced recently they're going to be charging at least 20p for a plastic bag and some supermarkets aren't issuing them at all anymore. So huge progress being made. In a sense, that provides a bit of a backstory to the end of a new tax. It, taxes do and can change the behaviour of businesses and consumers. Now, when it comes to externalities, I think it's a good example of what's called the mixed externality, plastic pollution. Um, a mixed externality is when production and or consumption leads to both external costs and also perhaps some external benefits. And the socially optimum level of output and the degree of market failure depends in particular on the extent, the scale of these externalities and also the valuation of them. Is plastic packaging an example of a mixed externality? Well, I think it probably is. I mean, you'll be well aware, no doubt, of the external costs of plastic packaging and waste degradation of natural systems, uh, especially in the ocean, greenhouse gas emissions clearly from production and the incineration of plastic waste <clears throat> and the wider health and environmental impacts from, from substances of concern. On the other hand, there are some benefits, and it's important to realise these things, that plastic packaging is extremely efficient to manufacture, it's low cost, it can reduce food waste, in fact, by extending the shelf life of products, and it can also, because it's light, it can also reduce fuel consumption for transportation, because the packaging weight uh, comes down. It's also quite good for food hygiene as well. So you've got this mix of external costs and external benefits, although the weight of evidence suggest that the sheer volume and depth and weight of plastic pollution is probably uh, the dominant factor. So what is the, the new plastic packaging tax that it's on its way? It's called the PPT, the Plastic Packaging Tax, and it's essentially another of those environmental or green taxes designed to provide an incentive for businesses in particular to use recycled plastic when manufacturing. It comes in in April 2022 and it is it covers plastic packaging manufactured or imported into the UK uh, which does not contain at least 30% recycled material. Now the, it's, it can be a tax by weight and the tax initially is going to be £200 per tonne. It's going to affect tens of thousands of manufacturers and importers um, and, and clearly the aim is to try and shift um, towards recycling as well as as well as getting manufacturers to think about alternative ways of, of packaging their products. 
Now, a really important point. This is a significant government intervention, clearly. But crucially, this new tax is aimed at the packaging producers, like food processing companies and food and drink bottle, bottle, Coca-Cola, etc. It's not a tax on the end user of plastic packaging, the consumer. Although, as economists, you'll know that if you place a tax on a product, on the manufacturing or the supply side, often an indirect tax like that is, is passed on to the final consumer. And some examples of products included in the plastic packaging tax include uh, single-use bottles, you know, um, whatever it is, plastic wine bottles, plastic um, beverage bottles, ready meal trays, food pouches, you've seen loads of those around, don't you? Crisp packets, bin liners, nappy sacks, disposable cups, including ven vending machine cups, and those plastic wine glasses, and also things like disposable plastic bowls and plates, and also gift wrapping included. So this is quite a significant new tax to be aware of. Plastic ready meal trays are included. Uh, the charity Recoup uh, showed in 2017, a few years ago now, but still relevant to think that only about a third of yoghurt pot and sort of ready meal trays were actually collected for recycling in the UK. The rest sent to landfill or perhaps incinerated. Britain gets through more than two and a half billion single-use coffee cups every year. I think I account for about a half of that. But a very, very small percentage of those cups are recycled. So broadly speaking, what are the main arguments in favour of this new tax? I think the argument is essentially built around something called the polluter pays principle. This is a nice principle to build into your essays. And it's the commonly accepted practice, in essentially it's social, accepted across many countries, that those who produce or generate the pollution, the external costs, should bear the cost of managing it to mitigate or prevent damage to human health or the wider environment. It's sometimes called make the polluter pay. So what are some of the, the main arguments in favour of this new tax? Well... Um, here we go. The main aim, I suppose, is to create demand for recycled content and try and divert waste that would go, I suppose, to landfill or incineration. So a tax on manufacturers who create the plastic packaging. Good example there is processed food businesses. They will have to pay more for some of the external costs that that waste creates. And, of course, that can lead to market failure. I haven't included an externalities diagram in this video. I'm sure you can visualise how you might show that. Well, that tax will therefore increase supply costs and therefore help to internalise the externality. And as a result, you're hoping there's going to be a greater financial incentive for businesses to explore ways of cutting the amount of virgin plastic created in the manufacturing process. It should also create an incentive to import and use products that already use recycled material. Because don't forget, the tax can be avoided if your plastic waste, plastic packaging has a recycled content above 30%. And presumably over time, that recycled content will go up as a percentage to, uh, to drive that sustainability objective still further. Of course, in theory, another advantage is it's going to increase demand for and use of recycling businesses, and you, lots of small businesses are in that space. That should lead to more investment and jobs in emerging sectors, such as sustainable compostable products for food and drink. And in theory, of course, the revenue from a tax can be hypothecated or earmarked for socially beneficial purposes. I mean, taxes can sometimes be a catalyst for research and development, innovation and improved dynamic efficiency. Vegware is one of Scotland's fastest growing businesses. Vegware is made from plants using renewable, lower carbon, recyclable, reclaimed materials. Um, it's designed to be commercially compostable with food waste where accepted. And uh, I think there's a lot of businesses that would stand to, to gain from, from this. On the other hand, if you're evaluating, there are always drawbacks, limitations, risks, downsides from any intervention. In a sense, uh, this intervention could be the cause of government failure. So let's just focus on a few of them. First of all, a tax of £200 per tonne will increase business costs and therefore it's going to lower their profits, obviously depending on uh, the, the, it's a tax on weight. So businesses that are heavy manufacturers or users of plastic packaging will, will be affected. 
And indeed, the theory suggests that many of those manufacturers will pass on this higher cost to the final consumer. And then higher prices in the shops or the coffee bars might have a regressive effect on families on below average incomes. Second downside is that the tax will have, and certainly in the initial period, very high compliance and enforcement costs. Businesses have to collect evidence every quarter for recycled content. They have to provide accurate measures of plastic packaging by, by weight. So there's going to be enforcement and compliance costs. And there's also fears that this is a tax that many businesses are not particularly geared up to uh, addressing. So there could be quite high rates of tax avoidance, a type of government failure. And whilst the recycling industry stands to gain from this, uh, there are doubts about its own supply side capacity. So the shift towards recycling and away from landfill and incineration might be relatively small. It'll take time for the recycling industry to invest itself to provide that extra capacity. And even if that is available, and even if more material produced is recyclable, the fundamental issue, I guess, is will end users, including myself, when I have my coffee cup on the way to work, will end users change their behaviour? A tax on its own is not is never sufficient to meet environmental aims. So, for example, we need much greater uh, waste collection facilities throughout the economy. You need to nudge people to, to, to change their behaviour. Things like bottle deposit refundable schemes introduced in, in certain countries. You need a range of interventions rather than just one, um, placing all your hope on one single tax. OK, so there we go. There's a bit of background there on the UK plastic packaging tax. In a second video, I'm going to work through a 25 mark essay plan, an exemplar answer to show you how this might be an exam question and how you could shape a really good answer to it. But for the moment, thanks for joining in. Take care, stay safe, everybody. Stay curious and see you again sometime soon.